when we started the project, the resort project, um, we realised that it wasn't an isolated development, um, that it was very much intrinsically linked to the environment and, and to the people that lived out here. And that really allowed us to, to, to see that there was a much broader opportunity to, to not just do something that was you know, a commercial investment, but something that, um, that also had philanthropic components. And that was really you know, about looking at doing things like setting up uh, Marine Reserve. And that was one of the first projects that we started uh, over seven years ago. Here, with so little development in such big parts of the country, especially out here on the islands, then it's a, it's a great opportunity to, to protect the areas and protect the habitats whilst they're still in a very good state. We have a, a full no-takes uh, zone around the Songsar Islands, which is a 200 meet, extends 200 metres in all directions from the islands. Uh, we've also set up a much larger managed area that includes the Songsar Islands, but extends much further outside, away from them. And the idea of that is that it, it's, it's helping to uh, ensure that there isn't any real damaging fishing techniques going on. So that would be things like bottom trawling or any use of chemicals or explosives to do fishing. And that's obviously a real key because that's both it helps biologically um, and environmentally, but also is helping the communities if they've got better fish stocks, then they've got better livelihoods because they're able to, to catch more fish. Usually I do a lot of education in this community. Actually, uh, we establish one group of children because some are six to tall. So the objective of this uh, project is to build a community perspective, especially children build their ideas in the washing and then make sure that they grow up positively with both uh, uh, their thinking and health. For example, when I teach the, the uh, I used to teach them about the uh, marine conservation and then uh, when they return, they do, uh, they draw any picture related to what they have learned. Yeah, we've now got a point where, where within the, the, the reserve, we've got five to ten times the, the, the number and the size of, of, of species. So, so we could see that there was huge um, potential and, and that you know, we got the results with the marine reserve. So therefore we started to think, well, what, what else could we do? What other opportunities were there? And we started to look at, at other things and that's where it sort of evolved into establishing solar waste management systems. So each family were given a bin and we're ex it was explained to them that, that they had to put the rubbish in that bin at the end of each day. And then we hired a team of, of, local, um, you know, of, of locals who, who basically would then go and collect that rubbish at the end of each day. And then they would take it to the centralised um, solar waste management area and then separate it and then it would go off and create this, this system that, that we can now hand over. You know, we don't manage it. Um, you know, the, the, it's, it's completely a community initiative. Um, just about putting the system in place and, and providing that infrastructure so that people can, can, can have a, you know, a better environment in which to live. As our work in the community and, and our understanding of, of what was going on out here grew, we realised that, um, that it would be good to have some other people come and help. We brought over a nutritionist and naturopath from Australia who came over here after conversations that we'd had to do an assessment on the local villages, focusing mainly on the children. And her findings were even more startling, I think, than any of us really anticipated. Uh, what she found was actually that the, the rate of malnutrition in the village was 75%, whereas UNICEF had um, previously said on the mainland it was 45%. So it was quite astounding. The, the team were able to set up actually focused nutritional workshops to educate the locals how important fish is for nutrition. We do a workshop with the people here about like a, a food, a type of food that they eat to make their body strong or healthy. And then uh, after the workshop, we also provided vitamin food to the people to eat, make sure that they get enough. A vitamin if uh, their daily food did not uh, uh, contain that vitamin. And then the idea of the boat of hope, being able to get from just not just Prexfy, which is local to us, but then to take all of this awareness, this education, these this access to medication and vitamins out to the greater archipelago, so that all the villages had access to this. Um, it, it's our way of being able to visit the other communities 
around the, uh, around the island um, and also allows us to uh, restock the, the vitamin supplies that we provide to those communities. The hope is as we get the means to do so that we'll be able to reach all of the, all of the villages within the archipelago and be able to help every, every community and every community member uh, in this area. We're all emotionally driven individuals and you know, we're all here because we feel like we can make a difference. And so we're driven by what we can achieve and, and, and what the future may hold and, and the opportunities that are in front of us. We couldn't be, you know, we couldn't be more excited because we know what our team has done, we know what they're capable of, therefore, who knows how far we can take it.